Jesus could have chosen any way he wanted to change the world, but his choice was to change lives of a leper, a prostitute, a paralytic, and a small band of ordinary men. His only prerequisite is that they would follow him and go wherever he might lead them. 2,000 years later, not much has changed. As Young Life leaders, that's what we do. We're just a group of ordinary people that are willing to follow him into the dark corners of schools in the Charleston area. We enter the lives of teenagers and hoping to give them a glimpse of who Jesus is. I remember the first time that I went to a Somerville High School football game. The beautiful oak tree in the corner of the end zone, this incredible team running out of the tunnel with smoke coming from behind them. Young Life had never been at that high school. And I looked over in the student section and thought to myself, where do we even start? In Young Life, we don't wait for kids to come to us. We go to them and we call that contact work. Our leaders go to games, past the adult section and into the raucous student section. They do it for a chance to learn the next name. We long to go to places where kids feel forgotten and unseen and tell them they are anything but that. Whether it's after classes or after work gets out, every week our Young Life leaders go to the school, go to sporting events, go out to dinner, or simply just grab a cup of coffee. Our goal is to not only share the gospel with our high school friends, but our very lives as well. As our relationships with these kids grow, they usually gain some courage to come to a Young Life meeting. The first place they usually end up is at club. One memory that I'll never forget from last semester at a James Island club is when I gave a talk explaining how Jesus sees us. And when he sees us, he has compassion. And kids are so desperate to be seen these days that two girls came up to me after club in tears because someone had finally put into words what they were feeling and given them hope in the process. It reminded me why we do club, to show kids Jesus and talk about him in a way they understand. I don't know of another place where kids from all different cliques and different ages and grades come together to hang out, but that is exactly what happens at a Young Life Club. If you got to be there, you would see freedom as kids sing at the top of their lungs. You would get to see laughter billow out as kids experience a place where it's safe to not have to wear masks. You will get to watch them play and be kids and realize that following Christ is not a spectator sport. At the end of every club, a leader gets up and shares a short talk about who this man Jesus is. This all happens so that hopefully God would break down walls and soften hearts. And over time, we get to see kids open up and consider maybe for the first time how much God really loves them. After we've earned the right to be heard in kids' lives, we invite them on the adventure of a lifetime, a Young Life Camp. It's a place specifically designed for kids to have the best week of their lives. These camps are filled with surprises, new relationships, and a chance to get away to clearly hear about a God who is passionate about them. Each summer, we get to watch as kids are made new with a relationship with Jesus. But we aren't chaperones or counselors, but rather we get to come home with kids and as leaders start to lead them down this road, we're already walking with Christ. But kids crave community. And so having a place where they can figure out this faith with people their own age is paramount. Campaigners is our other weekly meeting where we do just that. Honestly, Campaigners is a conversation. It's a chance to ask questions, be real, and lean into what God might be saying to you. It's a weekly Bible study and small group wrapped up into one. For some, it's the first time they've opened scripture for themselves. For others, this is the first place where they've really gotten vulnerable. But over the weeks, we get to discover what it looks like to follow Jesus in their school. But our goal isn't to just deliver information. It's to create a community so tight that transformation would have to happen. At Campaigners, we embolden kids to use club as a tool to bring their friends to the foot of the cross. Kids' lives are changing, but any investment that we or you make isn't just into the lives of high school and middle school kids in Charleston, but rather into every life they will ever touch because they don't stay high school kids forever. So I had gone, I'd been going to Young Life meetings 
at a new high school. I was a new transfer to a new high school. Didn't know too many people. But there was a Young Life leader who I respected a lot. He invited me to come to camp that they were having in the next weekend or two. And so when I was at that camp, I heard the crucifixion story like I'd never heard it before, even though I'd gone to church all my life. And I accepted Christ because of my friend's invitation and for the invitation that Christ was giving me through the crucifixion. And I was a Young Life kid. So there was this morning I woke up and I didn't want to get up out of bed, but I went anyway to go have campaigners at my college leader's house. It was at 7 a.m., school started at eight. When we got there, breakfast was ready for us. We sat around a table, kind of like this table right here, around the circle, read about the Word of God, what He was applying to our lives, how we could go out and help others. And my college leader, Ann, really was impactful in my life and would come not just to campaigners, but see me at school, at tennis practice, in the parking lot after school, and really was a huge influence in my life. I was a Young Life kid. I was a 14-year-old high school freshman who cared an awful lot about what my friends thought and tried to fill every spare moment with some kind of activity. But on a beautiful starry night at a Young Life camp in the North Carolina mountains, God allowed me to be quiet and alone and still long enough um, for Him to speak to me about what Jesus did. And that has made all the difference in my life for eternity. And I was a Young Life kid. I remember at the end of a Young Life club, there was a a thing called a say-so, where you had the opportunity to stand up and in front of everybody say that you were going to uh, commit your life to Christ. And I remember in the, the moments right before standing up, thinking that this was going to change everything. The friends that I had in college, the woman that I would marry, uh, just what I did with my life would all be different from here on. And I just remember shaking with excitement, thinking of how this was gonna um, change everything. And, uh, and I was a Young Life kid. Yeah, I just remember like in 10th grade as I accepted Christ um, at Young Life camp. Um, it wasn't this like steady uh, growth. It was kind of up and down. It was, it was good, but it was just, I was still curious. Like, am I really worthy of being called a servant of the Lord? And um, even going into college, that was something I always questioned. Um, and I just kept sticking around with my faith. And um, before you know it, I became a Young Life leader and really started to believe like I am worthy. Um, and I was a Young Life kid. When I was a senior in high school, um, I was kind of going through a rough time. Um, went through a really hard breakup and my best friend had just been in this awful car accident. Um, I remember feeling more lost than I ever have uh, in my life. And in the midst of that whole year, um, my Young Life leader, Tracy, would meet me at this one coffee shop every Wednesday um, and just sit with me and listen. And no matter what was going on or how hard things felt, she just literally never stopped showing up for me. And I think that looking back on it now, the relationship that I got to have with her uh, really showed me, maybe for the first time in my life, what it might look like to have a real relationship with Jesus. And I was a Young Life kid. I remember this night when I first heard the Lord's story and after I heard his story I felt just a really bad feeling in my stomach and I felt like I wasn't good enough for him. So in that moment I really just wanted to talk to my young life leader because I just I didn't feel okay. And she just held me and she started praying for me out loud and she just said all the right words and I just started crying and I couldn't stop and I just started shaking and I felt this warmth just overcome me. And in that moment, I realized I just completely accepted him and I let him in like 100%. And I just felt like I was home. And I'm a young life kid. So I remember uh, at Sharp Top at camp over the summer, I was sitting up on a hill with Joey and we were talking about what it looks like to follow God and what sometimes you just have to do what God's telling you to do. And 
My whole life I had thought it was all about following rules and you had to follow the rules in order to have a relationship with Christ or else you couldn't have it. Um, through Young Life I've realized that it's all about having the relationship with Christ first before, before it comes to being as much like Him as you can. You have to have that relationship. And I am a Young Life kid. So through Young Life, I realized that I had turned my back on God and that I was a sinner, but I realized that we all sin and He still loves us anyways and that I do have a relationship with Him and that He loves me just as much as He loves anybody else and we do have a relationship, so. And I'm a Young Life kid. <laughs> I'm a Young Life kid. 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 I'm a young life kid.